Good afternoon, Facebook Live. This is Robin Carbigato. Welcome to today. We are going to have an amazing broadcast. I cannot wait. I'm glad I just showed up because I want to be on the other side of this camera and I want to be watching this broadcast. That is how excited I am today. And you know, when it's like that, it is going to be absolutely phenomenal. So as you join on, be super hateful, be excited, and know that God is going to be in the midst of us as we are agreeing in the name of Jesus Christ, the name above all names. Amen. Good afternoon, Deetra. I see you too, Katie Higgum. God bless y'all. Thank you for joining in. And I'm actually going to take my shoes off because I'm starting to get hot. And I forgot to fill the water in my little portable AC. Hey, Donna, I love you. I forgot to fill the water in my portable AC. Hey, Kim Mitchell, I love you. So just bear with me one moment, and I'm going to get water real quick and put it in my portable little AC. Yes, it is, Sue Gailey. It is warm. Love you, sister. Now I will be, hey Deborah Faulkner, I love you. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Now I will be comfortable because I can tell you most likely I will be sweating <laughs> during this broadcast because I get excited. And when I get excited, I build up my thermostat, thermostat going up. Amen. And so, as we start today, let us enter into this broadcast in prayer. God, we just rejoice at the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for the light of truth that you have sent us, your Son, who is bright within us as we are that temple of Holy Spirit. And your word is all across the land revealing the knowledge of your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And so today's broadcast, I'm going to start sharing with what God has really put on my heart for 2022. And we're going to get into some different things in today's broadcast as well as Thursday. Hey, Lisa Coburn, I love you. And of course, we will get into Isaiah 22, 22. That's been one of our ministries, and it is 22 is 22, and IS stands for Isaiah. But I'll actually be referring to Revelation 3, that is referring to 22 is 22. Hey, Cynthia, Happy New Year. So good to see you on here. And we will be getting into the new year right. I know when I was at my parents' house for Christmas, you know, I just love to visit them. First and foremost, they are absolutely the most amazing parents. I'm very biased. I know how blessed I am. So many people say, Robin, you, you are so blessed. Yes, I do know how blessed I am. I know how blessed I am with my parents. I know how blessed I am with my husband. Okay, I'm biased, but I believe my husband is the best, as you should too. And I'm very biased about my sons and my daughter and Grace and my grandbabies, as we all should be, right? And so, as we were visiting them this Christmas, Holy Spirit just brought such a strength upon me. And I just began to prophesy to them and exhort them. And I just felt like I was going to be lifted up out of their house as God just started pouring out His heart about 2022 and there was such a strength of the anointing released to encourage and edify us in the midst of that Christmas celebration and God told me that he wanted me to come on this broadcast for today and for Thursday and to share this 
to strengthen and edify y'all with scriptures, with what the Lord's given me, so that you can be encouraged. Amen. We see in Joshua 1, when Joshua gets ready to go and take the promised land, that God tells him, be strong and courageous, be brave and courageous. And so we're going to look at that word, and we're going to see the courage that God wants to bring us. Now, understand that the only time you need courage is when you do something you haven't done before. And it carries great risk and great reward. Yes, Sue Gailey, amen. Woohoo, that's one of my favorite things. And so we're looking at a couple of things. And you're going to see for 2022, literally, there is going to be such a grace upon God's people where it's going to be like Joshua, like King David facing Goliath where there's going to be great risk, but with great risk, there will be great reward. And I'll get into that in a minute as I get into Revelation and I begin to unpack Isaiah 22, 22, just a little bit to give understanding. Amen. Faith comes by hearing the word and the very message spoken off the lips of Christ Jesus is the way the Amplified Classic unpacks it, which I really, really love because everything points back to what Jesus has spoken in the gospel. Amen. The Old Testament and the New Testament, it all points to the gospel. And so, as we look at today and Thursday, I'm going to be just pouring out tons of scriptures and I'm going to post these videos up on my YouTube channel, Robin Kirby Gatto, so you can go back and reflect and listen. And if you want to get a notebook later and just write down things that the Lord brings to your heart that he has me speak on, please feel free to do so. I absolutely love it. And before I forget, I will start doing book coaching again with Chapter 6 next week. Rich is off to Monday. <clears throat> this past Monday, and he's off next Monday, and so I'm trying to do a lot of things at one time, but God really wanted me to get this message out for 2022, and I will resume book coaching next week, and you will absolutely love it because we're going to get into Isaiah 7, and so let's look at Joshua 1, and we're going to look at <clears throat> Joshua being strong and courageous. He's being strong and courageous, and we see this in verse 7 of Joshua 1. And in fact, let me get let me get scripture right here. Sorry, somebody was calling in. I had to put it out. Joshua 1, verse 7. Only you be strong and very courageous, that you may do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper where you go. And so as we enter into this new year, God is setting forth scriptures that he is having us consider that will bring prosperity, 3 John 1, 2, to our soul. And you have to understand God is a cause and effect God. Hey, Deidre, God is a cause and effect God. What does that mean? And this is where my law school degree comes in to some respect because I look at the word of truth as a contract. It is a contract, okay? And so God has promises he wants to give you, okay? And he is bound. He is married to his word. And so he wants to perform these promises. Hey, Dina. And in order for us to comprehend it, we have to look at scripture. And so in 3 John 1, 2, we see cause and effect. We see that God says he wants to prosper us in our life, which means in the area of jobs, in the area of provision, in the area of relationships, everything that you can think of. He wants to prosper us in life and in help in our body and so we see a correlation in third john 1 2 
Beloved, I pray that you prosper in life and in health as your soul prospers. And that particular word there, when you look at the context of it, it means a breath. And it means that which is invisible, that word soul there. And a lot of people misinterpret it and think it means spirit. But when you look at the meaning from which it really is derived, it is derived from the word sentient. And you'll want to write this down because this is a word that will be very pronounced in your life this year. Sentient, S-E-N-T, like being sent. And the way I do always word plays because I'm just that way. And so the way to remember sentient is I is sent to the ears, nose, and throat doctor, okay? That's what we call E-N-T, ears, nose, and throat. E-N-T. So sentient is S-E-N-T-I-E-N-T. -E -E I is sent to the ears, nose, and throat doctor. And that is actually not a poor choice of variation to remember sentient because it is about your senses and so when you're looking at the word soul in third john 1 2 and the word from which it really is derived from sentient it means that we have senses yes deidre thank you we have senses and it it under un, it underrates in our own ability of how we lead life where it underrates our pain what does that mean sentient means that you experience pleasure and pain but this is the thing proverbs 27 7 says that even the bitter thing to a hungry soul is sweet and i have unpacked what is called a bittersweet taste test through ancient techniques revealed in the book of Isaiah showing us that there is such a grace of God, an anointing to open the senses. And that is in chapter 6 of Mindfulness, the Mind of Christ. And I am going to try to get the journal Just Be, the companion journal, out in January. I am doing my best. And so... As a result of people underrating pain and misconstruing their pain, they don't get the reward. Ding, 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 ding. Again, 2022 is great risk, great reward. In other words, you people that go to the gym, you know it like I do. Rich could tell you, no pain, what? No gain, <laughs> okay? And so you're going to see where God is going to bring in a harvest of such truth where you're going to see the sweetness this year of the pain that you've gone through. And that it is going to be Proverbs 27, 7, that things that had been bitter in your past that those things now will taste sweet. And God will, as it says in Ecclesiastes 3, God makes everything beautiful in its time. And as I'm bringing up time, let me bring up the emphasis of eternity time. If you have not seen Book Coaching Session 18 on my YouTube channel, I encourage you to watch it because it reveals and the emphasis keeps coming from the Father that eternity time, and I explain it and unpack it, is the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, and the kingdom of heaven is near. And so, as we realize that we are not in seasons, but we are in a different time zone, and I've been saying that for a month and a half now, we're in a different time zone, we're from a different planet, and so harvest is here every day for us first and foremost in the fruits of righteousness john 15 8 which we present to god and it glorifies the father those fruits 
of righteousness are the sweet harvest of the pain that we've been through. That there has been a purifying work done in our hearts. Amen. And so, the scriptures that I'm going to lay out for you are going to be in context, as in with Joshua 1.7. And let me read that one more time. Where the scriptures that I'm laying out today and Thursday... If you feel led to write it down, I encourage you get a notebook, get a journal, write it down. And these are going to be scriptures that God is really just giving us to prosper in this year. So let me read Joshua 1, 7. Of course, Joshua 1, 7 would be one. Only you be strong and very courageous that you may do according to the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. And so you're going to prosper in your soul. And as you prosper in your soul, in the experience that you realize the pain that you've been through is really a pleasure. It has benefited you. And you're going to see such prosperity of soul. And you're going to see just a grace of God poured out for the power to get wealth the power to get wealth and that is in first timothy 6 10 that it is god who gives us the power to get wealth and that wealth is not just having money and provision that wealth is all the way around and it goes back to third john 1 2 that we're prospering in our soul because you can have all the money in the world and you can be so much impoverished in spirit and just have loneliness and lack everywhere you go. It doesn't matter about what's in your bank account, okay? And the reason that some people are not prospering in life, one of the things is, is that their soul has not prospered and God is married to his word. He wants to prosper us. And part of that prosperity is the result of our soul prospering. Amen. Amen, Dina. And so let's look at this particular word in Joshua 1 for good courage. Courageous. This word is all mats. Now, I've done this word before, and it's about being on the mat, that you're wrestling. So the word spelling of it. A-M-A-T-S, A-M-A-T-S, Amats, but in Hebrew, it's pronounced Amats. You're on the mat, so you're wrestling, not against flesh and blood, but you're wrestling, as we've been looking at the armor of God, with powers of darkness that are attacking your person, and you're going to overcome, amen? Hey, Sherry, in fact, Sherry was there. When I did um, the teaching, Sherry, I'm talking about being on the mat. Amen. You, never, you remember that teaching, sister. And so, this word, courageous, um, on mats, it means to be alert. It means physically, mentally, to have courage, to confirm, to be courageous, to be steadfastly minded, to be strong to fortify, to prevail, to strengthen, to make strong. So one of the big words you're going to see for 2022, and I'm going to bring that, I don't know if I'll get to it today, I hope so, will be in Revelation 3 as we look at that which we have endured in the past and the pain that we have endured, that pain is going to work to our good no pain, no gain, again, no risk, no reward. And so you're going to see things turning around, working to our good, Romans 8, 28, because we love God and are called according to his purpose. And you're going to begin to see such a dispensation of grace, God giving us such grace for us to walk into a wealthy place that we've not known before. Now, I want to say that one more time. Because it's going to encourage some of y'all that we're really going to walk into a wealthy place that we've not known before. First and foremost, in our relationship with God, with Jesus, with Holy Spirit, 
that it is going to be a deeper, wealthy place in our soul that we're just going to prosper and we're going to thrive in. And also in relationships that are immediate to our person and friendships. And you're going to see such a prosperity of soul that you have not known in this lifetime. And with that are going to become are going to come open doors. Now this is where we're going to get into Isaiah 22, 22. But before we get into that, I want to get into the three Hebrew letters that form this word amats. And remember, amats means you're on the wrestling mat. And the main word to get here is prevail. And we're going to see that prevailing with Genesis 32 and Revelation 3 with the Church of Philadelphia. With the Church of Philadelphia is just holding on with a little strength. But it's a prevailing strength that is given from the Father. And we see this same strength that is given to Jacob. And we'll look at that in just a minute. So it's composed of Aleph, Mim, and Sade. Aleph, A-L-E-P-H, is the ancient symbol of a wild ox. And it means strength. And it means beginning and first. And then Mim is a three-humped looking M, but it's really water. And it means massive and flooding in the positive. And then say, T-S-A-D-E, it's a fish hook. It means catch, call, desire, delight, need. We love you, Matt. And so the word picture you have for amats, for courage, is the strength from the beginning, which we know who is the beginning, Jesus. The strength from Jesus, from Christ, that massively floods you and gives you that delight that desire it catches you that's what god wants to do he wants to give us the desires of our heart amen the desires of our heart and that is psalm 37 4 that god that we are to delight ourselves in the lord and he will give you your heart's desire What's interesting, and I know some people are just so taboo, and if you are, well, you know, I just forgive you. I'm not offended. <laughs> you know, so many, so many people say, Robin, I'm offended that, that you think a Christmas tree is all right. Well, I'm not offended that you don't think a Christmas tree is all right. Listen, I was in the religious ditch for three years. I did not celebrate Christmas and suck the joy out of my son's lives for three years. Then God rebuked me, okay? So I'm not offended that people don't put up Christmas trees and have a problem with a Christmas tree. It doesn't bother me, okay? And that's the same way. Uh, and Sue, that I'm going to say this, and you can think whatever you think, and I have no problem with it. You know, some people, Rich likes Chinese food. Personally, I hate Chinese food. <laughs> hate. I know that's a strong word. I don't know why. I just don't like Chinese food. But now I love Japanese food. I like it a lot. I like Thai food. I like other Asian foods. I just don't like Chinese. Well, Rich will sometimes order Chinese food when I get my Mexican. I'm a huge Mexican person. And when he gets his Chinese food, he'll also get... Some of y'all know it. It's a cookie with a little saying in it. It's not a fortune. It's not, okay? It, don't give it that much power, okay? Well, one of the things that we saw was in that cookie that I know, Eva, is that it said, you know, your heart's desires will come true. And I said, Rich, that is Psalm 37, 4, that we delight ourselves in the Lord and he will give us our heart's desire, <laughs> okay? I just think that that's funny because God has just been speaking to me continually about 2022 being the greatest year that the saints have experienced and that there is going to be such a place of prosperity and soul in life and in health that we've never known that we're really going to enter into this year and part of that process has been the pain that we've been through oh yeah oh that's funny donna has been the pain that we've been through 
that has prepared us for that wealthy place where God causes us to have the power to get wealth. And again, that is 1 Timothy 6.10. But we are going to be able to enter that wealthy place because the harvest of the kingdom of heaven, the new time zone. We are in the new time zone. And you're going to hear me say that a lot in 2022 because you're going to have to have this shift in your understanding we are not in seasons that is not a part of our vocabulary we are in a new time zone and you have to get that in your knower because of where faith is stirred by holy spirit inside of us to grab a hold of the word and to hang on to that word where faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 1, 1 through 3. And so let's look at Scripture as we first go to, I want to read Isaiah 22, 22, and then I'm going to go to Revelation 3 and start getting into that. And I'm going to bring in a little piece of the armor of God, probably Thursday, Remember, we're still doing the Armor of God series. I stopped in verse 14, and we'll start in verse 15 when I get ready to pick up next week, and we'll return to the Armor of God. But part of that is not just, quote, incidents or happenstance that I'm doing this right in the middle of the Armor of God series because I'm going to be bringing in, in fact, I'll bring in a little part of that today just to give you a little snippet of that today. And so let's look at... Isaiah 22, 22, and we're going to look at one of my favorite scriptures and has been, and remember, Rich and I have had a ministry, 22 is 22, and it means Isaiah 22, 22, and we equip young people. In fact, uh, Lee on here has been to it. Sue, I don't know if you've been to 22 is 22. I can't remember. I know Dawn, Kim Mitchell has. And I know, uh, I think Katie has. I can't remember if Katie has or not. But there have been some people on here that have been to our 22 is 22 meeting when we had them in full force. And it is an equipping ministry and it is an intercessory prayer ministry. And so what was interesting is we started the ministry March 2007. And I'll try to find that. That's right, Sue, you were once. I'll try to find that picture of Rich and I at that very first meeting in March, March 7th, 2007. And what was interesting is I always forgot our wedding date, except for my parents. They gave us a picture frame that engraved our wedding date. And it was 2009. And I was like, oh my goodness, is our, is our anniversary the 21st or the 22nd? I can't remember. And I went to look at the picture frame and it says December 22nd. And I'm like, duh, how did I not know this? Because of 22 is 22. And what's interesting is we got married 12, 22, 2001. And God said, take out the zeros. And so I took out the zeros. And when you take out the zeros, it's 1, 22, 22, 1. And so it was like 22, 22 was enclosed with doors and it was just an awesome confirmation of God showing us that we were going to do the Isaiah 22 22 ministry and I say all of that because this has been one of the main scriptures that I've taught on for many years especially since 2007 and so I'm going to read Isaiah 22 22 I'm going to get into a dream that I wrote in my book on Amazon, God's Firewall School of the Prophets, the spirit, uh, session for the spirit of knowledge. And God wants me to share the dream from that book so you understand the open door and you understand revelation and you understand that high risk, high reward, no pain, no gain. And so you have a better comprehension of it and what it means for you in the coming days and the coming months. Amen. Verse 22 of Isaiah 22. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder. He shall open and no one shall shut. And he shall shut and no one shall open. That's the main context of scripture. 
and that is prophesying Messiah. And he is one that is like Elakim. He is going to be a peg in the Father's house, as revealed in verse 23. And on that peg, on Elakim, who represents Messiah, God would put every instrument of cookware, of wares, of cups, of pots on that peg. And the way that I like to depict it is that Israel was very nomadic. They moved around. And so you and I are used to four walls for our houses, whereas nomads, Israel, when they traveled, they had tents. And so in, in their tent, on a beam that was supporting the tent, they would have a peg. And on that peg, they would put their cups, they would put cookware, they would beautify their tent with their wares. And so, we represent those wares that Jesus Christ glorifies the Father's house. And we are the house, right? We are the house. He glorifies the Father's house with us. That we are being used of that, which is revealed in John 15, 8. Through what? Our works. Now remember, we're going to have a harvest of good fruit. We're going to prosper in good fruit. And as we prosper in good fruit, John 15, 8, those fruits of righteousness glorify God. And you're really going to see a grace as it's revealed that the knowledge of God's glory will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. We're really going to see a depicting of that. Hold on one second. Habakkuk 2.14. I just want to make sure. Habakkuk 2.14. That the knowledge of God's glory will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. You're really going to see that emphasized this year. And I also, with Isaiah 22, verse 23, want to bring in Zechariah 14 as it refers to us as holy pots. And in the Healing of the Soul series, God's Firewall Healing of the Soul series, I've done a workbook about being a holy pot in God's house. So Zechariah 14, at the very end of the chapter, you see verse 20. In that day there shall be written upon the little bells on the horses, holy to the Lord. And the pots in the Lord's house shall be holy to the Lord like the bowls before the altar. Yes, every pot in all the houses of Jerusalem and in Judah shall be dedicated and holy to the Lord of hosts, and all who sacrifice may come and take of them and boil their sacrifices in them. And traders in such wares will no longer be seen at the temple, and in that day there shall be no more Canaanite, godless or unclean person in the house of the Lord of hosts. Amen, Kim. Amen. So we're really going to see this 1 Peter 1.16 grace of being holy as God is holy. This royal priesthood, this holy nation. Because we're going to understand we're from a different time. We're from a different place. And that is the kingdom of heaven. And you're like, Robin, no, I already know. No, you don't. If you're not seeing miracles... If you're not seeing such an outpouring of the glory of God in your life, you are in that pain about to enter gain phase. So there's a transition in this time where we've taken all these risks, knowing that we've heard God being purified by His Word, tried and tested, and all of that pain 
is now going to turn into a reward. And we're going to see the fruits of the works of God within us. That harvest of righteousness. We're really going to see that pronounced in this hour. And we're going to see so much freedom and things that we've cried out for. We're really going to see answered prayer. And you're going to say, Robin, will so many people say that. I don't care what other people are saying. I care what God wants me to say. And I know that for the last three to four weeks, he's been having me say that he's the God that hears and answers you. You see that in Micah 7, 7. So let's look at Micah 7, 7. And then we'll go to Revelation 3. Micah 7, 7. Don't you love that? That's that seventh day rest. Amen, Dina. So Micah 7, 7. And I'm going to read verse 8. 8 as well, Micah 7, 7, and 8, because you'll see again this risk and reward, this pain and gain. Micah 7, starting in verse 7 and then in verse 8, but as for me, I will look to the Lord and confident in Him, I will keep watch. I will wait and hope and expectancy for the God of my salvation, my God will hear me. That's verse 7. Then verse 8, Rejoice not against me, O my enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise, and when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light to me. Woo! See, you haven't medicated your darkness this year. Glory to God. You have waited with expectancy on God. That risk, that pain, and you're going to get that light, that reward. That is the truth, the kingdom of heaven. Jesus' message, John the Baptist's message, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is near. And I explain that in chapter 3, or chapter 4 actually, of mindfulness, the mind of Christ, and bringing in Matthew 11, 12, and 13, since the days of John the Baptist until the present time, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. And I explain how God's fruit is crowding us all the time, but do we perceive it? Do we see it? His glory is around us, but do we perceive it? We're so distracted with seasons, with things of this world, with relationships that are nothing but dead fruit, and it keeps us out of that time zone of God's time, okay? And God is emphasizing this over and over and over. And you're going to say, Robin, that doesn't sound uh, scriptural. Well, guess what? Right after God had me given this out for a couple of weeks, and I got to the belt of truth, and I got to the belt of truth being girded about, girded about the loins. That word girded about comes from the word in Greek, Z-O-N-E, Zune. Guess what that word means? It is the same word where we get zone from. You've got to be in the right zone, okay? If you are not in the kingdom of heaven, faith, You are going to be pulled and flooded with the doubt of this present age. And so your trials leading up to 2022 have been to build your faith so that you can enter this door, this time zone. This analogy is not being disrespectful It is in order to be exact as it relates to the Greek word zune, as it relates to the belt of truth being girded about zune, our loins, 
but also as it relates to giving you understanding about the open door. I will tell you, I would think probably 99.9% of people, 99.99% of people in the Christian church do not understand the open door. And we're going to get to that. And the reason I say that with confidence and jealousy for the love of the truth is because I have had a very detailed dream that brought understanding that I shared in my book that I told you, God's Firewall School of the Prophets, Session 4, The Spirit of Knowledge. And it's this dream that God is going to have me bring with Revelation 3. Revelation 3. So let's look at Revelation 3. So Revelation 3, 7 and 12 is going to be massively graceful in 2022. It is just going to be so dripping with potency and power in your life. Revelation 3 verse 7. This is where we see the key of David because Jesus is saying, I am the key of David. Verse 7, and the angel messenger of the assembly church in Philadelphia, and Philadelphia means brotherly love, and so you're going to see the remnant coming together in such grace of brotherly love. These are the words of the Holy One. There's that word holy again. So you're really going to see holiness pronounced, and you're going to see those holy pots in Zechariah 14, representing Isaiah 22, 23, the holy vessels on the peg, which is Messiah, which is Jesus, that we are on him, that we are being glorified through his work, through his cross and his resurrection. Amen. Uh, the true one, the holy one, the true one, he who has the key of David, who opens and no one shall shut, who shuts and no one shall open. I know your record of works and what you are doing. See, I have set before you a door wide open which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but a little power. And yet you've kept my word. And you've guarded my message. And you've not renounced or denied my name. Now let me emphasize this enough. Because again, you're going to see risk, reward, pain, and gain. This verse 8 is revealing the little strength that God's people have right now. And the main emphasis is about prevail. Just as in Genesis 32 with Jacob, it was not about Jacob winning in Genesis 32 when he was wrestling. Now remember the word courage is all mats. So we're not just wrestling as in with powers of darkness, but we're like Jacob and we're wrestling with the glory of God to obtain it. Now, I've done this message a gazillion times. I have it on my Robin Kirby Gatto YouTube channel. It's probably the most watched teaching that I've done and it's called Arise and Shine and it is where I discuss Jacob wrestling with God because Jacob thinks he knows who he is, a conniver, a trickster, and he's in fear of seeing his brother's face. But he's going to a new place, and that's the place of promise. And so he needs courage to know who he really is. So in Genesis 32, he's wrestling with the angel of the Lord. And it's there where we see in verse 25, this is the mat all mats. Remember, courage in Hebrew is all mats. It's about the mat where you've been wrestling. So here, it is about the glory of God to know who you are. Amen. And so in verse 7, verse 25 of Genesis 32, and when the man saw that he did not prevail, well, first let me get to verse 24. And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. <clears throat> and when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and Jacob's thigh was put out of joint, and he wrestled with as he wrestled with him. 
Then he said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you declare a blessing upon me. The man asked him, now this was the blessing. What is your name? In other words, who are you? And Jacob's old season no longer fit because he went into a different time zone where seasons were not a part of the time zone. It is two totally different entities. So Jacob is in a time warp. Woo! And Sherry's been there when I've talked about, I love to be warped. Hallelujah. That's all. That's in Song of Solomon there. And so Jacob is in a time warp. And now who he is in this time warp is not who he is in the earth. Now he realizes he's met with God face to face and he's lived. Amen, Sherry. He's alive. He's lived. And glory to God, now he's moving forward into the plans and purposes of God with power with God and man because he prevailed. Okay? And so this word prevail, God showed me in the analogy as I taught it in about 2010, 2010, he showed me that, Robin, look at a mechanical bull. At a mechanical bull, you're not looking to beat the bull. You're just looking to hold on for a time. Oh my goodness, I've said that for over a decade. Do you get this? You're holding on to enter the new time zone, the time warp. And please don't think I'm being disrespectful. I'm just trying to give an analogy. You're holding on to enter that new time. That's what Jacob was doing. He prevailed. He held on and he entered that time. And so he names the place Peniel as the sun was rising and it means the face of God. And what's so important about his thigh being out of joint was the way that men formed contracts. Amen, Sherry. The way that men formed contracts in the old days, as you look at Abraham grabbing his servant's thigh, they would grab their thigh, okay? That's how men made covenant. As they say, like, let me give you 20 cows. You give me 20 sheep. And they would grab each other's thigh. This man would grab, uh, let's say Abraham would grab, let's say the man's name is Dan. He would grab Dan's thigh. Dan would turn around and he would grab Abraham's thigh because they didn't have a piece of paper. They didn't sign a contract back then. The reason they grabbed the thigh is it was the place that was the greatest strength in the body. Okay? And so the strength of the contract was in the thigh. And so God showed me with a Genesis 32 how God's hand was touching Jacob's thigh to make a contract, a covenant. Do you hear this? For what? For Jacob? No, for God, for his glory. In other words, Jacob if I can use you in the earth as my mouthpiece, as my servant, I will give you my glory. Woo! Do you hear that? So here, we now are going to go to Revelation 3. Now let's go back to Revelation 3, and I'm going to tell you the dream of the open door. Amen? And so I've taught all of that before for years, but I wanted to bring that in relation to those watching this broadcast so you would understand what all was transpiring. God is reaching to us in our weakness and he is bringing his covenant to us as we have been in this place of Revelation 3, 8. Okay, so listen to Revelation 3, 8. Now remember verse 7 already has Jesus again quoting Isaiah 22, 22. He says, I have the key of David. In other words, he is the key of David. You have to get this in your knower. Jesus, 
the word, okay, opens a door that no man can shut. The time zone of the kingdom of heaven inside of you, the word of God, when you get warped in that place and you hold on on your mat and you hold on and you wait for God in your darkness, that glory of God is going to shine in your darkness and it is going to take you into a new time warp. Okay? Glory to God. And so verse 8, we see this little strength. Okay? I know your record of works and what you're doing. See, I've set before you a door wide open, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but a little power and yet you've kept my word and guarded my message and you haven't renounced my name or denied my name. Take note. I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not. I will cause them to bow down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you because you've guarded and kept my word with patient endurance, have held fast the lesson of my patience and expected endurance that I give you. I will also keep you safe from the hour of trial and testing that is to come upon the whole earth. Now get this, saints of God, okay? That is to come upon the whole earth. So we're going to go to verse 10 today, and I'm going to get into this dream, and I'm going to get into one little small part of Ephesians 6 with the armor of God, and I'm going to go ahead and pull that up right now. Because we're going to get to verse 16. Just a small, 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 super small portion of it to bring in understanding. And so, in this dream that I shared in my book, I was taken into the heavens. I was taken by in the spirit into the heavens and just lifted up in the air and all around me like a whirlwind. Okay? All around me were doors, doors, as far as the eye could see going up and just all the way around me, all the way up, were all these doors. And so God began to take me up in the heavens and I would look at the door and as soon as I looked at the door, I saw this moving scene like a movie is the only way I can describe it. And this is what God showed me too as it relates to the Apostle John and how he was given the book of Revelation as he was caught up in the Spirit and he was led by Jesus up into the Spirit in the heavens to come up and he was able to see all of Revelation in this manner is what the Lord showed me. And so as I was lifted up, I began to see through all these doors, and as I would look at a door, I would feel in my body everything that was going on in that door, and then I would look at another door, and I would feel and experience in my body everything that was going on in that door, but this was the thing. The doors had no door to shut on it. It had no door. Look, it was like, let's say this is a door. And let's say, I'll do it the backwards. This is a door. Okay, this is the door that you open. This was not on it. This was not on it. It was only a door frame. And there was no way. There was no way to shut the doors because there was there were no doors. There were only door frames. It was impossible to shut the doors. Now, this is the thing. When God began to take me up and I would look at each door, he began to tell me that it was a specific anointing with each door. And as soon as I looked at the door, I was filled with this strength. I was like, what? And then I would look through another door. And man, I would feel everything that I saw is the only way I can describe it. And he just kept taking me up and up and up. And I just kept looking at these different doors and I would experience everything was downloaded in one second, one a millisecond. I mean, as soon as my eyes were set on it 
everything within that door, it was inside of my person like an instant download. And I just kept getting downloads and downloads and downloads. And I just kept getting strengthened by what I saw. And it was the anointing. And so I say all of that to get to this point to encourage you because when we see Jesus has opened a door, that means all that's standing there is a door frame and it cannot be shut because there is no door on that door frame. It is totally removed. And you are just able, a lot of people think that you have to enter that door. No, you just have to look. You just have to look. Some of you need to hear this. Because you're like Jacob wrestling the angel of the Lord. You're like the church of Philadelphia and you don't have any strength. You're at the end of your rope and you don't think you're going to make it. Listen. You don't have to crawl through the door. Where does it say that in Scripture? See, we try to make Scripture like us. Oh, we see that you got to open a door. You got to open a door. You got no. The, there is no door. There's only a door frame. You don't have to go through it. You just have to look. You just have to see. Woo! You just have to have eyes to see. Hallelujah. And ears to hear, hallelujah, woo! And that anointing, hallelujah, is going to be added to you. And that is going to be faith. Woo! Now, this is where we're going to end. I'm not going to unpack it now because I'm going to get into it more when I get to the shield of faith. But in Ephesians 6, 14, scripture, uh, scripture says in verse 16, I'm sorry, Ephesians 6, 16 Lift up over all the covering shield of saving faith upon which you quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. Now, let me tell you this. Where you've had but a little strength, there is going to be such an anointing as you look. As the kingdom of heaven is made known to you, as the open door, as you look, as you have eyes to see and perceive it, this strength is going to flood you. And all of those missiles of the devil that have been coming at you are going to be destroyed. They are going to be put out. And this is where I'm going to end. Because particularly in Ephesians 6, 16, shield in Greek is thurios. Thurios. And I want to think about this as the thigh. I'm going to get two areas of revelation here to release to you before I end today. And so, thyruos, but some pronounce it, is spelled T-H-Y-R-E-O-S. T-H-Y-R-E-O-S. And I think about thoros. Sometimes I do that with this word. I think about Thoros, but here we're talking about thigh as well. Thyros. And so this word here is a large shield. Are you ready? That is shaped like a door. What? 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 A large shield shaped like a door. This comes from the root Greek word, thura, thura, what? Through, what? Thura, T-H-Y-R-A. When you get his hand on your thigh, you're going to go thura. And are you ready for what thura means? Thura means a door. Compared to a door, it is an entrance. It is a portal. Now, I'm not talking about those portals that the Kundalini people talk about. The opening and a closure, a door, a gate. What? Yes. I'm telling you, saints of God, your faith is going to a new level. 
And you are going to see the covenant of God with you as you enter into a different time. It is harvest time. Now, this is part one. I'll do part two on Thursday. I pray you have thoroughly enjoyed the scriptures that God has given today. And I pray you enjoy Thursday as well. God bless you. You be hopeful. You be expectant, saints. Great risk, great risk brings great reward. No pain, no gain. Get ready, saints. God bless you. I love you, and I'll see you later.